Greetings, friends. Welcome to our devotional study today. We are in, in the book of Hebrews. I encourage you to turn to Hebrews chapter 1. And, uh, of course, as you turn to Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews is all about the superiority of Jesus Christ, the fact that Christ is better um, than uh, there's many things in this book that he is compared to, but the truth is he is better than anything. And uh, it is interesting to uh, note the times that the word beggar is used in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3, we saw that he is better than the prophets. Now in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 4 through 13, 14, we find that Christ is better than the angels. And we looked at verses 4 through 5 yesterday, so we're going to pick up our study in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6. But let's read beginning in verse 4 once again today. So Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 says, Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish. But thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as the death of garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are, not all, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So as we came into... Uh, these verses we saw yesterday that he has a better name than the angels in verses 4 and 5. And now as we come into verse 6, we see that Christ is better than the angels because the angels are commanded to worship him. Go this way it said in verse 6. It says, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Well, that word first begotten, first of all, don't let that fool you. Some people have looked at that word and they have come to the conclusion that this means that Jesus has a beginning, that he is the first begotten. That's not what the what that word is saying when it talks about Jesus Christ. It is talking about the fact that he is first in priority or that he is first in superiority. And as we come into these verses, it says here in verse 6 that Christ is superior because the angels are commanded to worship him, like all the angels of God worship him. He is the creator of angels, and he is the ruler of angels, which makes him superior in verse 7. It says, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Come back with me, if you would, to Psalm 104 and verse 4. Psalm 104 and verse 4. It says there, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. So once again, you see that this is a quote from the Old Testament scriptures. But we see here that Christ is the creator of angels and that also that he is a ruler of angels. It says he maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So there we see that obviously if Christ is their creator and he is their ruler, then that means that he is superior to them. Christ is also superior to the angels because he has an eternal throne. Notice in verse 8, it says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of thy of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. So we're going to just hang on to the thought. We're going to look at this in just a moment. So he has an eternal throne. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Friends, it would do us well by times, or all the time really, to stop and remember that no matter what is going on, that the bottom line is this, Jesus Christ is still on the throne. That he is in control. 
And uh, oh, what a comfort, friends, that is in this world that we live in to understand that we have a God who is in control. He has an eternal throne. And we're going to look at a verse cross-referencing that in just a moment. Then it says in verse 9 that he is anointed with the Holy Spirit. It says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. So there it's talking about um, the fact that he is uh, he is anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit of God. Now as we think about what it says in verses 8 and 9, let me bring you back to Psalm chapter 45 and verses 6 and 7. Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. So we've been seeing several reasons today why Christ is better than the angels. And the next day that we are together, we will look at the conclusion of this chapter and we'll see the conclusion as to why Christ is better than the angels. But while you're turning to Psalm 45, let me remind you what we're looking for here. In Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, with that in mind, Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. Listen very carefully. Thy throne, O God. By the way, these verses teach us the eternal sonship of Jesus Christ. If his throne is forever, then if his throne is eternal, he is eternal. Psalm 45, 6 and 7. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated hagest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. So once again, we see here a quote from the Old Testament scriptures. Now, let me give you these thoughts today as we close. Why is Christ better than the angels? Well, in verses 8 and 9, we saw Christ's sovereignty. We saw the fact that he is in control, and that is shown to us because of the fact that it talks about his throne and that his throne is an eternal throne. So Christ is better than the angels because of his sovereignty. But he's also better because of his deity. Jesus Christ is God. Did you see what it says? He's clearly talking to the Son here. Notice this beautiful verse that talks about the deity of Jesus Christ. That word deity simply means Jesus is God. Now notice what it said in verse 8. But unto the Son, and that word Son is capitalized. There's only one person it can be talking about, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice this. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Thy throne, O God. So we see there the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we also see his dynasty in that verse. We see how long he's going to be on his throne. It says in verse 8, but unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. He's also superior to the angels because of his authority. Notice, his authority is told us by a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. That reminds us of the authority of our God. And we can rejoice in the authority of our God. And we need to be reminded, friends, that he has the authority in our lives. That he has the right to tell us how to live we don't need to listen to you know angels don't have that authority but god has that authority jesus christ has that authority because he is god and then we see his integrity in verse 9 thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity friends the bottom line is this as a child of god it ought to be my desire to love the things that God loves and to hate the things that God hates. There is something wrong with the person who claims to be a Christian who loves the things that God hates and hates the things that God loves. Friends, we are to be more like the master. And when that happens, that means that our likes will become more like his likes. And that ought to be our desire in our lives as the people of God. Next day, we will conclude our study on Christ being better than the angels from 
Hebrews chapter 4, verses, or 1, rather, verses 4 through 14. Have a great day.